Hi, my name's Claro Kepke, and um, I'm 75 years old. I was born in Astoria, Oregon, and I moved to this beautiful place in 1977. So I wasn't one of the originals, but I got here early enough to see a whole lot of the saga that we've all been, we've all lived through, and and are learning about. Um, so the story is that uh, my uh, woman partner and my, and myself uh, had gone to uh, Eastern Washington to pick apples one September. Uh, must have been 1976, and um, and uh, we went with this other couple and and rode with them. And when we got up there, we realized that basically it's slave labor. Uh, we were making less than a dollar an hour. And um, so we said, fuck this, and we just decided to hitchhike home. So we started hitchhiking home. So we got a couple rides out of that, it was the Yakima Valley. And, um, and then we got a ride in this uh, old school bus. Um, bunch of young hippies from New Jersey, no seats in the place, uh, all mattresses in the back. And uh, we told them, we said, well, yeah, well, we're going to Santa Cruz. Uh, how far are you going? They said, well, we'll go, we'll take you as far as Humboldt County. The land there is $200 an acre. You don't have to put any money down till your first crop comes in. <laughs> and uh, my girl, my, my partner and I looked at each other and kind of smiled and said, great, and went back to Santa Cruz, tied up all the loose ends and came back up the next spring, 77. Well, I had already been living in a house truck and, um, and she got a pickup, uh, pick, her dad's pickup truck that had a, a full-size camper, camper in there, not a shell. And uh, so we moved up here and uh, figured we'd have to, we'd have to uh, buy some land, but at that price, we thought that would be easy. Uh, we had, uh, we, I was on a disability and she was, uh, she got uh, welfare for uh, having a son. And, um, but we never even had to, so, so we went to uh, and stayed, parked our trucks down, uh, at what came to be called Kegger Beach uh, on the way to Kimtu down uh, Sproul, off of Sproul Creek Road. And uh, uh, now it's all been closed down. You can't even drive down there. But in those days, it was wide open. We were the only people there. And, um, and uh, the first morning after we had spent the night there, Sheriff came down. And we thought, oh boy, you know, we're gonna have to move or something. He goes, no, I says, I came to make sure you guys were okay. Uh, we heard uh, gunfire up on the ridge uh, last night and just wanted to make sure you were okay down here. <laughs> and we smiled and said, well, yeah, we're doing great, you know, and thank you very much, sir. And uh, anyway, and so we put our names up on bulletin boards that we had a child or two and uh, we're looking for a place to caretake or rent. And we started out in Honeydew with a couple there. And then, um, <laughs> funniest thing that happened there that I remember was hit hitchhiking to uh, Garberville and uh, to buy some groceries. And it took at least an hour to hitchhike from Honeydew. And, um, and I wasn't thinking really very, very, uh, well, I guess, and I bought a big Dungeness crab to take home for dinner. And uh, somehow it made it because it was still fit to eat by the time I got home. But anyway, so then um, what happened was in, Ch in what is now Chautauqua, which used to be called Evergreen, um, in the old Chautauqua building, um, Peg Anderson worked there part time. Uh, it was called Evergreen, and a couple uh, guys that live up Elk Ridge owned it. And um, 
And uh, anyway, and so uh, I was in there one day and uh, started asking, maybe it was Peg, but whoever the checker was, like, we're just new in town and we're just wondering if you uh, might know of any anybody that's looking for, uh, for caretakers or anything like that. Well, it turns out that someone, this man that was in line behind us heard me and said something to me uh, after I had paid for our stuff. He said, hey, uh, hang out for a minute, uh, might be able to help you out. So I said, great, you know. So uh, turned out it was Jim Ekadal. I knew him as Deerhawk. And um, he'd grown up in San Mateo, so like other people from the Bay Area, this was a natural place. In 68, when the police and the National Guard started, shoot, started shooting at students, protesting, uh, people in San Francisco, the hippies in San Francisco, which was the central place, uh, I couldn't come out here because I was on probation <laughs> back east. Anyway, uh, they either went to uh, uh, Nevada City, Grass Valley area, or they came up to Mendocino's uh, Humboldt. And um, so that's, uh, that's what they had done. They actually went to Colorado and then ended up coming back to Humboldt County. Um, first time I ever heard of Mendocino or Humboldt County was when I, we still lived in Santa Cruz. And, uh, and we were all smoking the uh, homegrown from down there at the time, which was dynamite. And, um, but one night, this friend of mine who was a dealer and a, a, a real uh, car salesman, really, and, uh, and uh, anyway, he had these pinner, he had this pinner joint of something from Mendocino. And about five of us took hits off of it and were on the ground in a couple minutes, laughing, of course. But uh, so anyway, um, we come up to Humboldt, we're, uh, uh, oh, so Jim Ekadol, uh invites us down to, uh, to his property, he and his wife, and uh, have dinner. Come on down and have dinner with us one day and take a look at the property. They had 80 acres uh, uh, in the Edersburg area, and um, so we did. <laughs> Um, at the same time as I met Jim in uh, Evergreen, Chautauqua, uh, my partner, Cecilia, um, had met Jim's wife, Nani, at the, his first wife, because that was also, this was 1977, that was the first year that the Summer Arts Fair happened. And it basically happened because there was a one beautiful, wonderful woman who lived in Salmon Creek named Jude. Uh, I don't think, I don't know if I knew her last name, but she was tall, slender, beautiful black woman from San Francisco who uh, resembled Judith Jameson, who was an internationally known dancer made famous in the Alvin A. Lee American Dance Theater Company. At any rate, um, she had arranged classes for African and modern dance. And all the young women, or quite a few of the young women, hippie women, um, took part in that. They were all in their early 20s. And um, so we had the first summer arts festival that summer which was fantastic. So um, pri uh, the Summer Arts Festival uh, was put on by a group of people, uh, including Carol Bruno, um, that, uh, that um, lived up, uh, uh, up Elk Ridge Road. So they were close enough to interact in town and consequently were active in arranging social events, dances, uh, uh, music entertainment from the Bay Area, etc. And in those days, um, there was no Mateel Center. Uh, there was an uh, old fire, fireman's hall that was uh, across the road from Don's Auto Parts um, up in the uh, 
what's now the industrial, or no, no, excuse me, um, at the at, near the cemetery in Garberville, and um, that fire hall, fireman's hall burned down uh, years later. But we used to, we there were years when we had so many parties in there, and we could bring our kids, or everybody had little kids, and they just we put them all over in the in the corner on sleeping bags and blankets and knew they were safe because we were all there and we were all peace loving and that 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 was our religion is peace and love and uh so so then uh we had we moved to fire creek um with, with uh, the ecodolls and other people that were there and um we all had kids, they were all around the same age. And uh, as they started to uh, be old enough to have pr at least preschool, if not kindergarten, some kind of gathering place that had a little bit of structure to it <laughs> prior to that and ongoing, uh, it was heaven for the, for the kids because they could just, they were free on what was actually over 120 acres of land. They could just run from house to house, and one day they'd be playing at uh, so-and-so's, another time they'd be playing at my house, another time someone else's, and there were the, the girls had horses, so, you know, it was, it was, it was just, it was marvelous. And, um, and we lived in a little shack. We lived in a camp, actually. We had a little shack, we had a tent, we had a camper shell, and actually we had two tents, and all in a, in a camp area. And um, eventually we, we had a teepee there, and my daughter and I lived in that lodge for, for uh, a whole winter, over winter. And uh, she has memories, and I have memories that will we'll go with us to the grave. Uh, they're just so much fun and and uh, and learning just a tad uh, about survival. Um, anyway, uh, as the kids grew older, we, we realized we uh, needed to build a school. Um, there wasn't even an Edersburg school at that time. We uh, had been to some meetings in uh, uh, Edersburg concerning a school. And, um, but there were still different communities, even in the Edersburg area. And so we were uh, one of those areas. And so um, with lumber that was mainly milled on, uh, from our property and, and, or, or repurposed from taking down old buildings, um, I wasn't living there full time uh, through the winters at that time, so I, I wasn't a part of all of those projects. But we built a school and uh, oh, had maybe a dozen young people from uh, uh, five or six to about nine. And um, it, was, it, was, it was a great experience for everybody. And uh, also at the time, um, this was uh, uh, when the rainbow gatherings had started and, um, and several of us from the area, uh, Edersburg, Harris, um, other parts, uh, you know, went to uh, uh, those, some of those rainbow gatherings and the first one I went to was in Oregon, Southern Oregon, so that was convenient. And, um, and we met people there who uh, uh, who became lifelong friends, and um, and so we got the idea of the gatherings from from the rainbow gatherings, and started to have our own. And the best time of year uh, uh, here at, uh, for the climate at that time, which of course has changed almost completely uh, since then was for us to have spring gatherings. 